What is up, Watch Fam? Happy Tuesday, and welcome to Lug to Luck. I am Christian from Theo and Harris, and today we're getting down and dirty with six vintage watches. All right, let's do this thing. Let's jump into the six new additions to the watch shop at theoandharris.com. Let's start with number one, a Rolex Date 8 reference 1803. It's probably in my top two favorite Rolex references. Sure, on a bracelet, it might be a little bit garish, but in the net-net game, it's overall refinement and historical importance blow the doors wide open. Zooming in a little bit closer into this particular 1803, we've got something very, very special here. Not only does it feature a silver linen dial, but probably something you've never even seen before, a bark bezel. Isn't that just awesome? I, I, I love the texture of it. I love that in a world of fluted bezels, you'll have something that stands completely out. It's not better or worse, it's bark. And it's different, and I, and I love it. And if all of that wasn't enough, as you can tell, the case is in wonderful, sharp, thick condition. So yes, we've got a winner 1803 this week at theoandharris.com. Moving on to something a little bit more simplistic, we've got an Omega Seamaster, and I absolutely love this watch. First, because it is Omega. I have a very, very deep passion for Omega. It was one of the first two brands that meant something to me, and more than that, like I've been saying for a while now, Omega has meant something from the wrist of John F. Kennedy to the moon. I don't know, I, I kind of just like that idea. And of course, it doesn't hurt the fact that it's true. The dial isn't without a few small blemishes, but I absolutely love the eggshell color of it. And even more so, both the slender hands and dagger indices have this beautiful pink, almost copperish tone that, uh, I don't know, it, it just blows me away. I try to challenge myself every day to be on the hunt for Seamasters. Uh, and the truth is, it, it does get harder and it gets harder and harder and harder to find uh, truly interesting examples. Um, but one, because I think that I'm getting pretty damn good at sourcing watches, but even more so because Omega genuinely has produced such consistent quality for the past, you know, God knows how many years. It does make my job a little bit easier. This is a brand that was genuinely mass producing watches to be proud of and you can't say that about a lot of companies so let's move on to something a little bit more off the beaten path a very funky Favre Luba there were two elements about this watch that caught my eye to begin with and have since kept my attention one this textured, kind of like gradient gray bluish dial it's unlike anything I've really ever seen on a watch truthfully and I find it endlessly interesting to admire. Second, the shape of the steel case. I mean, look at those sharp chamfers. And although it's just one big piece of steel, it almost seems like the bezel is a separate entity. Although this brand may not get very much attention or attention at all by most people, this watch does prove to me exactly why it does deserve it. Okay. Let's jump back into Rolex territory with this 34 millimeter reference 1500. First and foremost, it features a stunning original oyster bracelet. This is something that I come across very rarely. So when I do, it's very, very exciting. And take a look at that dial. I'm not sure exactly what color it was originally, but this probably like Havana brown color now is absolutely breathtaking. It, it, it's kind of almost completely dissimilar to anything I've ever seen before on a vintage Rolex. And if that wasn't enough, the puffy tritium plots outside of every single hour marker, I mean, just blow you away. They add such extra, I, I guess, depth to the entire aesthetic. The moment I found this watch, I was absolutely blown away by it. And now, months later, honestly, nothing has changed. And I can confidently say that the next owner of it will be able to say the same decades from now. Okay, now on to something a little bit out of my realm of comfort, an Omega Seamaster Professional. Actually, it's, it's a Bond watch. This is something that I had obviously seen hundreds of times before on Instagram and on YouTube, but surprisingly never in person. So when I had the opportunity to try this on just two weeks ago, I was actually blown away by it. 
Whether it was the twisted lugs, notched bezel, or wave dial that did it, I don't know. But I've got to say, when it comes to modern sports watches, this has to be one of my favorites around. And no, it does not hurt that it comes with its original inner and outer box and papers. Okay, last but not least, a Tudor Prince Oyster date from 1960. What caught my eye immediately about this was the case condition. I mean, take a look at those lugs, they're razor sharp. And beside the smoothness of the bezel, there's just beautiful complement in contrast. Then there's that silver dial, which is just totally untouched and mint. I mean, this is the kind of watch I love because it's simple, but extremely well executed. It doesn't have all that much going on, but what it does have is done perfectly. And in a world of excess and poor execution, this is a very, very good reminder of why vintage so often is so much better. Thank you guys for watching this week's In The Metal. For Anna's professional photography of these six beautiful watches, I highly recommend you go over to theoandharris.com right now.